Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on GPT-3. GPT-3 has been trending since its beta release in July of 2020. It's believed to be one of the most significant models in the field of artificial intelligence. In this video, you will learn what is GPT-3. We will discuss GPT-3 specifications. Then we will look at it language models and the parameters used to build those models. We will go over data sets used for GPT-3, uh, GPT-3 accuracy, and finally the applications of GPT-3. Some of our content has been taken from multiple videos that people have posted on Twitter, and we have given due credit to them. You can check out the links to see the source of these videos. Let's begin by looking at what is GPT-3. GPT-3 stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It is a powerful third-generation language model developed by OpenAI, which is an artificial intelligence company based out of San Francisco, California. GPT-3 beta testing began in July of 2020. It can easily understand your problems and generate human-like texts in a matter of seconds. GPT-3 is the latest example of a long line of pre-trained models like Google's BERT, Facebook's Roberta, and Microsoft's Turing NLG. Pre-trained models are large networks trained on massive data sets, usually without supervision. Soon after its release, the Internet was flooded with text examples generated by GPT-3. OpenAI has been working on building language models for quite some time now, and every breakthrough makes the news. GPT-3 seems to be a turning point in the field of AI. Let's get started by looking at the different specifications of GPT-3. GPT-3 has been created using 175 billion parameters. None of the previous language models have used such large number of parameters. It's been trained with 45 terabytes of text data, which includes sources from Wikipedia, Google Books, and coding tutorials. 60% of the data for pre-training the GPT-3 model was taken from Common Crawl. Common Crawl is an organization that crawls the web and freely provides its archives and data sets to the public. Common Crawl's web archives consist of petabytes of data collected since 2011. Amazon Web Service began hosting Common Crawl's archives through its public data sets program in 2012. Using all this data, GPT-3 taught itself the statistical dependencies between different words, which were encoded as parameters in its neural network. GPT-3 has 96 decoder layers and is built on a system of 285,000 CPU cores, 10,000 graphical processing units, and 400 GBPS network connectivity for each GPU server. GPT-3 was trained on a supercomputer that was developed by Microsoft and OpenAI collectively. This chart reflects the different language models and number of parameters in billions that were used to create the model. Using pre-trained models and fine-tuning them to solve specific tasks has become a popular trend in the field of natural language processing. Looking at the graph, you can see that Google's BERT model uses 110 million parameters. However, the large model uses 340 million parameters. The previous GPT model, that is GPT-2, had 1.5 billion parameters. Then the T5 model has 11 billion parameters. Next, Turing NLG, which is Microsoft's language model, had 17 billion parameters. But GPT-3 stands out among all the models with 175 billion parameters. Next, let's talk about the data sets that were used to train the GPT-3 model. A total of five data sets were used in GPT-3, which is Common Crawl, Web Text 2, Books 1, Books 2, and Wikipedia. The next column shows the number of tokens that were used in billions. GPT-3 models using 175 billion parameters are trained with 499 billion tokens in total, out of which Common Crawl, with 410 billion tokens, has 60% of the training data. WebText, with 19 billion tokens, contributes 22% of the training data. And then you can see the breakdown for Books 1, Books 2, and Wikipedia. So we have the respective tokens, the weight in training matrix, and epochs elapsed when training for 300 billion tokens. 
Moving ahead, the graph that you see on your screen shows the benefit and accuracy for various zero, one, and few shot tasks as a function of the number of model parameters. The graph depicts that the accuracy of the model increases with the number of parameters. There is no need to do gradient update or fine tuning for using the GPT-3 model. You can just interact with the model using normal language or provide some examples of the task that you are trying to complete and the model will perform on its own. Larger models make increasingly efficient use of in-text information. In ZeroShot, the model predicts the answer given only a natural language description of the task. No gradient updates are performed here. In one shot, the model sees a single example of the task along with the task description. In few shot, along with the task description, the model sees a few examples of the task. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. So this is probably the most important part of the GPT-3 tutorial, that is, its applications. Since its release, users who got access to GPT-3 have displayed a wide range of utilities of the GPT-3 language model. Let's explore a few of them. First, you can create a fully functional search engine using GPT-3. You can search for anything randomly and it will return an exact solution along with the URL, which is pretty exciting. Here you can see the user is randomly searching for some information. For example, who killed Mahatma Gandhi? and you can see GPT-3 returns the result along with the URL. You could search for how many atoms there are in benzene and see the results, six carbon atoms in benzene. Or perhaps how many atoms there are in benzene, the result being six carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms. Another application of GPT-3 is that it can build a machine learning model by generating the code automatically. So the user is given the description of the data set, a desired output it's looking for in plain English. He wants to build a model to classify images into five groups. The data set has 25,000 images with an input shape of 500 by 500. You can see the GPT-3 understands the user input and creates a convolutional neural network model using the Keras library and has all the pooling layers, the ReLU layer, and the activation functions as well. The next application of GPT-3 we will discuss is creating resumes. So GPT-3 allows you to create resumes by looking at a few lines of text related to your work experience, your educational background, the projects you have worked on, your hobbies, and other details. So you can see here the user inputs personal information about himself such as his designation as a software engineer and the company he used to or is currently working for. He has worked on React.js since September 2018 in Los Angeles. You can see on the left, the resume will update automatically. Later, if the user updates his resume and makes changes to it, those changes will automatically be reflected in his resume. So let's see what happens as the user updates his resume here. We see he changed to August 2018, and is now in San Francisco, California. And we see that information added to the resume. Next, the GPT-3 model can help you write SQL queries given a line of text and a table in place. We can see here the user wants to find out how many users have signed up since the start of 2020. And now, if you search for this result, GPT-3 will automatically give you an SQL query. And we can see it here. Select count ID from users were created at January 1, 2020. If you want to find the average number of influencers each user ID is subscribed to, if you search for that, Again, GPT-3 will automatically create an SQL query for you, as you can see here. Up next, we have an example of where GPT-3 can be used as a function in Excel or Google Spreadsheets. Here we have a few state names and the population. So for example, if you want to find the population of Michigan, you can select that table and give Michigan as a parameter. GPT-3 will automatically search for the population in Michigan and it will return the result in a few seconds. You can see it's loading, and we see 10.31 million. 
Let's say you want to check for the total population of Alaska. You can find it easily using GPT-3. We see it's loading now, and you see the population is 603,000. So let's say we wanted to find out the date these states were founded. We could add a few dates here, and it will return the date for Alaska. You can see Alaska was founded in 1906. You can also perform some numerical or mathematical operations using GPT-3. So here we are finding out the sum of two numbers given a table. So we are calculating the sum of 14 plus 40. So it should return a sum of 54. And we can see that here. We can find the Twitter username of a person given a set of examples. You can see here we have the person's name and the employer. And if you're looking for the employer of a certain person, it will return the results. Now, if we change this to Twitter username and search the Twitter username for a new person, it should give us the result. The final application we have is building interactive web and mobile applications. Using the GPT-3 model and the available plugins, you can give the description of an application and its look and feel. Then GPT-3 will automatically create an application for you. You can see here the user is typing a website like stripe.com that is about a chat app. And if you click on design, GPT-3 will automatically create an app for you. And we see it here. It says text, video, and photos. Then if you want, you can go ahead and customize this app as well. Moving ahead, let's see if GPT-3 is just a hype. According to a report, the training process would have required 350 gigabytes of memory and cost nearly $12.6 million. There is no doubt that GPT-3 is worthy. It's been trained with almost the entire internet. There are downsides and room for improvement, though. The authors of the paper have acknowledged the same as well. Here's what Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, has to say about GPT-3. He says the GPT-3 hype is way too much. It's impressive. Thanks for the nice compliment. But it still has serious weaknesses and sometimes makes very silly mistakes. AI is going to change the world, but GPT-3 is just a very early glimpse. We have a lot still to figure out. Now, if you want to get access to GPT-3, please visit the OpenAI website and fill out the form to join the waiting list. With that, we have reached the end of this video. We hope you have enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, please add those to the comments section of the video. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, stay safe, and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.